So a wavering radiant ask, uh, you know, I've only discovered you recently after a quick scan of Patreon. It seems no one has asked you. Yes, I was wondering if you've seen the movie The Green Knight, and if so, what are your thoughts? Uh, personally, I found it incredibly rich in symbolism and depth, so much so that I had to watch it a second time and wanted to watch it a third, and I feel like I still haven't grasped all that it has to say. I'm going to disappoint you, man. <laughs> I'm going to totally disappoint you, Wavering Radiant. I don't know what to tell you. I did see it. And, okay. There are some interesting things in the movie, but you have to see it in its proper, you have to see it in its frame. You have to see it in... It's frame, which matches the frame of all the cultural things. And so I'm going to spoil this movie for you guys. If you haven't watched it, you know, block your ears, stop listening or whatever. I'm going to totally spoil it right now because I have to spoil it to explain this problem. The movie starts with, with Gawain sitting on a throne. He's holding a scepter and a globe in his hand. And so manifesting the medieval king, the holy emperor, this is what he's manifesting. And a crown comes down from heaven to fall on his head. So right now, it's all good. This is it, right? The crown coming from above, right? Being crowned from heaven, coming down from above in order to manifest his kingship. And then when the crown lands on his head, he bursts on fire. So already, that's the entire movie. That's the whole movie that it's all, that's what it's all about, okay? So... I'm not going to go into the details of the story, but I'm going to tell you how it ends. So at the end of the movie, there's an ambiguity about whether or not Gawain gets his head cut off or not. Okay. But what there's no ambiguity about is that after the credits, there's a post-credit scene which cinches the whole symbolism of the movie, which is that there's the crown of Gawain on the ground. Remember, the crown that came down from heaven to land on Gawain's head as he was sitting there on the throne in the guise of an emperor. The crown is on the floor and a little girl walks in. She takes the crown and she puts it on her head. And if you want to understand the symbolism of that movie, that's what it is. And, and I'm not saying there aren't some interesting aspects to it. There isn't some good symbolism in it. There is. But ultimately, that's the frame of the movie. And it just strangely happens to fit with the frame of every other story which is being told by Hollywood right now, whether it's He-Man or Marvel or everything. And it's completely in tune with what I've talked about in terms of, in terms of the idea of self-sacrifice as a trick to replace the masculine hero, the male figure with a female figure, you know. And so even the tropes that are positive, because there is a sense of self-sacrifice in Gawain, you know, where he accepts the consequence of his actions. He accepts to take the blow of the night instead of lying in a kind of passion of Christ, little last temptation or whatever, and going back into the world. And then, you know, finally really losing his head because he gives into all these, all this politics and all this kind of uh, playing. Uh, and so you're like, yeah, that's it. You know, that's, that, that's, that's it. But then, then it just becomes He-Man, right? It's become the same story as He-Man. And the same story as Logan and all these stories of, of, a, of, a, of a, the, the masculine hero sacrificing himself in order to be replaced. And it's just, it's just too bad. I hate to have to see it that way, but that's what's there in the story. And it just fits with everything else. So sorry, man. Watch it again. Watch it now with that in mind. And then watch all the other stories, right? Watch all the other aspects. And you'll see that the entire movie is about Gawain deal, dealing, failing, and succeeding, but strangely succeeding with the feminine, right? Giving the head back to the feminine. That's the story, dude. That's why he, that's why, that's why that saint is, that's why he meets that saint. That's not in the original story. Right? He goes down into the water to find this, the head of the dead woman and puts the head back on her in order to save her. And it's like, that story is totally fine. It's great. It's a great story. But if you stitch it all together, it's just the same thing, same nonsense.